How does dating advice shift if you're over 50 and can you still apply all the stuff that I talked about? What do you do when you're trying to reject a guy but he isn't getting the freaking hint? How do you explain your lack of dating experience to a man and have him take it well and things not be awkward? What do you do when you've got guys who are in person knocking on your door? Should you hold yourself back for someone who's overseas? And what do you do when you realize that your negative beliefs that have come through from a raft of negative experiences are tainting your current dating environment? What's up? Welcome to week 23. It's Ask Mark again. You guys are sending some great questions this week. I even had to postpone a couple. They were so good. So I've selected the five of the best ones here. Math, I've put yours to another video. Let's get straight into them. Subscribe, hit the little bell. First question. Hi Mark, this is from Gigi. Uh, are different things, are there different things a woman in her 50s should be doing or is everything you talk about for all ages? This is a great question and I definitely need to do a video for you over 50s out there. There is so much to cover on this alone. So in the very brief time here, what I wanna do is just give you three quick things that you can use right now. First of all, Virtually everything I say still applies. There's a few tweaks, but the fact is we're all in the modern dating environment now, which means modern dating is relevant to all of us. So the first thing you can do as an over 50, and a complaint that I hear from a lot of over 50s, which is both men and women, is how negative the environment can be. Obviously when you're over 50, you've had more time to build up baggage, both good and bad, and experiences both good and bad, but a lot of people, in the over 50s are bringing their negative experiences into dating. So the first thing I'd say, Gigi, is make sure you check your baggage and make sure you're not bringing your negative beliefs to dating. Uh, second thing I'd say is make sure you embrace your inner child. Okay, youthful energy will always be attractive. There's a video I posted on Facebook a while ago. I'll put it in the description when I find it. An 84 year old woman who's out dating, right? 84 and she's having the time of her life, the men she's meeting, older gentlemen of course, are resonating with her, it's so attractive. I want you to have a look at this video. If you have any doubt that youthful energy doesn't apply at any age, have a watch of this video, 84 year old kicking butt in her dating life. Uh, the third thing that I'd say is make sure you utilize online dating. One thing that over 50s really struggle with is where to meet people and the places just to find eligible men. And over 50s is the biggest booming niche in online dating. So make sure you get online, you know, we've got videos for that. Hit me up for a one-on-one -on -one if you want specific strategies relating to you, but definitely make sure you're still out there meeting lots of men, but you will probably need to use online dating as part of that. Second question is from Katie, and I really like this one. So Katie says, hi Mark. I recently tried to let a guy down, uh, or let a guy know that I wasn't interested in dating him after a few months of talking over text. I know I did the right thing, he had zero boundaries. After just a couple of conversations, he was talking about moving out to my area. Uh, I think that means we lived previously two hours apart. He was saying how special I was and even that he was falling in love with me. Yes, he, yet he really knew very little about me and never even asked about me. By the way, already, this is classic Romeo signs. Male dating personality, if you haven't got the guide, check the uh, down below for the 10 male dating personalities in the description and I'll pop the link to the Romeo video as well. Uh, where are we up to? I could tell he was in love with the idea of love. Classic Romeo. At first I figured he was player trying to tell me what he thought I wanted to hear. After I nicely told him that I was not interested, I ended up explaining why and he continued to press and said he would change for me, etc, etc. What do you do when they just do not get the point? My solution, I eventually blocked him. Okay, this is a really good question. We just had the video out on how to reject a guy nicely. So I'll put that in the description as well if you haven't already watched it. In that video, I always talk, I talked about rejecting a guy in the way you'd wanna be rejected. So done respectfully, still done firmly, making things clear. Now, one thing that a lot of women struggle with is that they dilute their message by saying the same thing less effectively over and over again. So for example, Katie might send this guy a, a lovely message that says, hey, look, it was so nice meeting you. Um, I think we're on a bit of a different wavelength with what we want and I wasn't super feeling things, uh, but it was absolutely lovely chatting and stuff. Um, all the best in the future. 
I don't know if she's going to see him again. You might say, or oh, I'll see you at work. I'm not sure if they work together. Something that's very clear, but also very respectful. But what often happens is the guy doesn't take the hint. And the guy sends follow up and follow up and you start to get pissed off. And you send, look, I already texted you this. And then he's like, oh, you're a up yourself bitch, whatever. And you're like, fuck you. And then someone blocks someone else. You don't have to repeat yourself. When you reject a guy and you do it in a way that you like and that you're proud of, that gets the message across clearly, if he keeps following up after that, you no longer have to respond. Doing so actually dilutes your message and makes it harder for him to understand. Because think about it, if he's got this nice rejection from you and then he's texted back and he's gotten a response and da 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 da, he eventually has to scroll up for ages to hear that nice respectful one, right? In other words, it gets completely diluted and he forgets about it. But let's say he does text four or five times in a row and you just don't respond to those. He now has that one text to refer back to and that's going to be his memory of you. That's going to be how he sees you. That's going to be his explanation for why you're not responding. It's all right there. Now, in this particular situation, you could certainly do it over text. It's only, they've only been talking over text. So there's no need to do a phone call or any of this stuff. This is a reasonable situation where you can make your standards clear over text. But you don't have to disrespect a guy and you very rarely, honestly, have to block a guy to reject him respectfully. The only real reason to block is if it's getting to outright harassment and he's, it's just relentless. But otherwise, less is more. You say what you need to say, and then you leave it. You make your point. You, you don't have to make your point over and over again. And a lot of women make a mistake by doing that, feeling like they have to respond after they've made their position clear. And that's when things usually get shorter, more bad tempered, everyone gets pissed off, and we're all blocking one another. It's very rarely necessary. So don't dilute your message by having to repeat yourself. Next question is from Sunshine, and I really like this one, so listen closely to this one. Sunshine says, Hi Mark, I really love your viewpoints. I've been speaking to guys on and off for a while, but there is a dreaded point, and note this word, dreaded, when I have to tell them my lack of experience. Question, how do you tell a guy you've never dated before? It seems to put them off, especially as, I, as I'm in my mid-twenties, and it makes me feel insecure about it. Okay, Sunshine. This is a really important message and this applies to anything that you don't want to tell a guy, anything you're ashamed of, anything you're dreading. Anytime you perceive something as bad, the guy is also going to perceive it as bad. Perception is reality. And if you're presenting this to men, whatever it is, lack of dating experience, anything at all, if you present it, present it to man that you perceive it as a negative, which in Sunshine's case, she certainly will because she's dreading it. Men are going to perceive it as a negative too and are going to be turned off by it. You only have two things you can do. There's two ways to handle this. You either reframe it or you don't mention it until you can reframe it. They're the only two ways to make this work. Let me give you an example. A client of mine had a scar on her and she perceived the scar very negatively. When men would ask her about it, she would either make up a joke, so kind of dance around the topic, but men were perceiving that she wasn't proud of it and they were getting a funny vibe from it. Or she'd tell them the truth, but because she was ashamed of it, the truth of her negative perception was coming across to men and men were losing attraction. Now remember, there's two ways. You can reframe or you can not speak about it until you can reframe. But she couldn't not speak about her scar. It was there for everyone to see. So we reframed it and she said, look, do you know what? This scar is something I'm really proud of. It shows how far I've come. It shows the woman I was and how I've changed in that time. And it's a great universal reminder for, for where, I've gone, where I've come from and how far I've come. Suddenly she was perceiving it positively and the men she was meeting were perceiving it positively as well. Let's take another example. Uh, Estrella put a comment on, hi, I would like to know how a man react when a girl sh says she is still a virgin. Again, men are going to perceive this positively or negatively based first and foremost on your reaction. If you get into the bedroom and he's taking off your clothes and then you get a weird and you're going, oh, look, there's something I have to tell you. 
oh, I don't want to say it because I'm, I'm really unsure. The guy's going to be like, what, what, what is this? And you're going to say, I'm a, I'm a virgin. And the whole thing is going to be a huge turnoff for the guy because you're perceiving it as such a negative. Whereas if you could reframe it and get in there and say, he's taking off your clothes and you say, look, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've held myself back until now. I haven't done this with anyone before, but I want you so bad right now. I need you. I will need you to go slow and be a bit careful, but I really want you. I really want you to fuck me right now. How well is the guy going to take that, right? Are you always going to have the confidence to do that? Of course not. We can't instantly reframe things all the time. It's not always easy. When I was going out to build confidence myself, was I going out and telling people that, hey, I'm out here meeting people to build confidence? Not always. No, that wasn't always a reframe I could do. I just didn't have that confidence yet. So I just didn't mention it. Now, when I tell the story, of course, yeah, I went out and, and to build confidence and that's what I was doing. Now it's fine. I've, I'm confident in that fact. I've reframed it. But you won't always be able to do that straight away. So to get back to the original question, Sunshine's original question, Sunshine, you've got to either own this by reframing it or not mention it until you can. You can say to guys, hey, look, you know, honestly, I've had other priorities at this point and I'm, I'm proud that I have. I've really focused on my work and I'm doing so well with that. Or maybe, you know what, I was brought up with a really conservative upbringing and thankfully I'm now out of that. I can see that I'm out meeting men now, just started, but I'm really enjoying it. And you know what? Waiting this long has actually been really good because I've got myself in a good place. I'm in a good headspace and I'm, I'm reading situations really well. So I'm glad that I waited. If you reframe it as a positive, men are going to see it as a positive. If you feel like you can't do that yet, just don't mention it for right now. It's your business. Wait until later where you can feel good about it. Hope that makes sense. Next question was from Murray N. Murray. N. Murray says, I just recently subscribed. Uh, da, da, da. I started chatting with this guy I met online. Uh, distance bothers me a lot, but I started to like him and him likewise. I saw a lot of positive and potential with this guy. We already started talking about meeting up this August, which isn't too far away on his birthday, and he will come and meet me. Uh, there are other guys pursuing me that are closer to me and more available, but this one does really interest me. Should I give it a shot? Well, Murray, the answer is yes, of course you should give it a shot. But I think the real question you're asking is, should I block out these other guys and give this guy an exclusive shot? And the answer to that is no. It's very easy to waste months or even years of what could be productive, growth producing, confidence building time on a long distance guy that you actually have no compatibility with. This is the best way to waste your time in dating is to put yourself on hold for someone who is literally completely unavailable. Now the good news is this guy is actually coming in August. So what's that? July, August. So he's only a couple of months away. It's unlikely you're going to go exclusive to anyone else in this time. So you're going to still be open to meeting that guy. And do you know what? Hopefully he comes over. You guys have a great connection, great compatibility. And I, I don't know what the future is, whether he's sticking around, moving to your place. And you can potentially pursue something there. But the ability to stay single, the ability to build confidence, the ability to meet people, grow your skills, just talk to men is huge. And you cannot, I cannot overstate this. Don't underestimate it. So no, I definitely wouldn't be taking yourself off the market. I would definitely be out there meeting people, but stay single. And this is, this is something I've added a recent exercise to my clients programs where once as part of the 12 week program, they have to actually go out of town as in several hours away and find three to five dates in that other place. And I'm doing this purely to get them in the headspace that I can date. It doesn't have to go somewhere. And that doesn't mean it's a waste of time. I can date just to meet people, build confidence. And that's what I'd be doing. Certainly Murray until this guy comes and then judge him on his compatibility, his effort, most importantly, and obviously future logistics from there. Uh, final question is from velvet. Um, and this is a bit of a deeper one, but I just wanted to put it up because I feel like it's something that some of you will be able to relate to. 
Uh, she says, amazing vid, Mark. Honestly, give me such new perspectives uh, and guidelines. Now I want to know what, uh, now I know more what I have to do in regards to walking out. My question is, how do I repair myself? I feel like such a damaged woman now from all the pain and disappointment of previous dating when men would flake on the first date after showing interest and I would notice how, uh, of how men push away, putting them in the friends category. Um, she's saying, I'm, she's saying that she's saying I'm not ready, but I want love so much deep down. Uh, so how do I heal myself and have a clean state of mind, uh, state of heart? I thought this was such a beautiful question because Velvet's come out here and she's been completely honest. She's saying, look, I, I've had some negative experiences. I've had a lot of negative experiences and I can see myself self-sabotaging because of them. I can see the way they're affecting my dating. I can see the way that I'm playing them out. I'm not wanting to be vulnerable anymore. I'm rejecting men who are perfectly good. But deep down, I still want love so much. And I think this is such a beautiful message because it's coming from a part of her that's being so open and honest and vulnerable. And Velvet's reached a stage that a lot of people struggle with, both men and women, where they can say, look, I'm, I'm responsible here. My beliefs are fucking this up. And I want to change this. So much respect to Velvet. And if you can have this much honesty with yourself as Velvet has had, you should be very, very proud of yourself. In terms of answering the question, this is something that I work with clients for weeks, months on end. There's a lot here. There's a lot of beliefs that need to change. There's a lot of things we need to examine. Velvet, the biggest thing I'd say to you would be to invest both time and money in yourself. Whether it's books, whether it's coaching, I'd love to coach you one-on-one, -on -one, Velvet. Whether it's a psych, the more professionals, the better. The more time you put into yourself, the better. But Velvet, if you, or if you out there like Velvet, are honest with yourself and have this self-sabotaging pattern where you, you can see there's a whole raft of beliefs that need fixing, this is not something that's gonna change in two minutes on Ask Mark. It's certainly something you can start, but these things change with consistent habit. Consistent positive habits in the right direction, and that's where a coach can be so helpful. So Velvet, I'd encourage you to book in, absolutely. If you out there are having similar problems to, Vel to Velvet, I'd encourage you to book a discovery call with me or do your own thing. But take action, invest time and money into yourself with professionals, seminars, books, one-on-ones, whatever it is, because this kind of honesty is rare. So if you have it, use it. I'd encourage you to put your ego aside. I've certainly had to do something very, very similar in my life. I encourage you to put your ego aside and ask for help. Kudos to you, Velvet, you're amazing. <laughs> and the last, we had to, had to end on an up note, the last comment is from Sarah. What if the guy's not shaved? Is it always about the women? No, it's not, Sarah. You're, Sarah, you're absolutely right. Guys, keep yourselves clean down there as well. There's probably two or three men left watching this video. Keep yourselves clean as well, fellas. The ladies will appreciate it. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know thoughts, comments, questions. Uh, math, your Ask Mark question will be in a separate video because it was so gosh darn good. So I'll have that out in its own video. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Like I say, give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell. And I shall see you in Ask Mark in one week's time.